I'm delighted because here tonight because I'm going to ask him uh, one question here now. Uh, oh, uh, our uh, you know, the uh, the black and whites. Mm. As Brenner's got a bit of dilemma here because um, last week Jake Collar he wants to play number six. Yeah. He wants to. So it's what is it? By all accounts, they said it to Albert Kelly. It was told Brenner's. Tell Albert Kelly I want this number six jersey. That's great, isn't it? I think he's a great half. I think um, I would have played his he, he, now. Yeah, he is. And um, from from speaking to Lee, and I don't think it's any secret, he can be as good as he wants to be, mm. but he has to want to be it. Mm. So for me, there's there's a backhanded compliment in there, along with a backhanded dig. I think also his that, attitude. That, I, I fully understand yeah. that, but I think after last week, at all when he got the taste of international rugby league, he's sensing now, thinking, you know what? I can be part of this now because I realise the potential what I've got. I'm going to make sure I use that potential. Well, I do. I do think Lee's got a wonderful dilemma in that um, if Albert Kelly decides to play silly beggars, mm. um, which could well have happened. Yeah, of course. He, the spawn, <laughs> the spawn, <laughs> no question. But um, he can flick him. Simple. Mm. You're off. You're out. Mm. Gone. Um, and and probably the same with anybody else within the group. Um, so, so he's got a luxury there that allows him to play uh, a quality English young talent mm. in the halves or in the centres or at fullback or at thirteen or wherever he wants to play him because what, he can yeah, play all the positions. But what I'm saying is, is he wants to play number six. Will he start him out at number six? Will he shift Kelly? It depends if Ke Kelly comes back overweight or if he trains the house down or if he plays to the level that he played two years ago when he was phenomenal and mm. uh, probably a half that was wanted by many clubs uh, at the time. He probably started last season in the form which probably would have got him an NRL contract back home mm. if he wanted to go back home and then tail it off a little bit with, with injury or whatever. So. Um, I'd play Jake Connor in the half. So, so can Kelly it. play any other position for you? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. He's not one of these that could be. It, it's, it's, a really interesting, it's a really interesting one because too many cooks, if you like. You cannot, uh, and what you can't do is you can't split your cap too many ways. Um, you can't have too many high earners. And Jake Connor will certainly now an international be a high earner. Albert Kelly will be up there. Mark Sneak will certainly be up there with the job he's done in the past. Hull FC have been successful, maybe now a victim of their own success. And with success brings upgrades to players' contracts. Whether they're on 20 grand and they go to 30, it's still an extra 10 grand. Or whether they're on 50 and they go to 100, it's 50 grand. And um, it, it, Certainly when you're a successful club, upgrades happen and, and you can have less players but of better quality. You get a lot of injuries, you get a season like last season. So... Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting season for Hull and for Lee Radford because the expectation is that they'll certainly be better than last season. Um, and the 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 but they club that's really one trophy. The playing squad no, dramatic. No, not much. So they're going with the same, effectively the same guys who lost eleven games at the end. To of last yeah, season. to a degree. Yes but and no. Some injured players, some injured players will come back in. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be an interesting year. I think Lee Radford knows he can't have a season like last year. I think the players know they can't have a season like last year, and the sooner they get a win at the early season, the better. The the comment about Jake Connor is, for me, he can be anything he wants to be. He can play in the halves. It's a luxury that not many clubs will have mm. with regards to quality player that can s slide into any position and will be in your starting 13 in a position regardless. Yeah. Um, so it's certainly he used to be involved. Uh, he, exactly he's a that. different yes. player yeah. when the ball is coming to him. And he can he's have got, everything. He's got everything, hasn't he? He can kick the ball, he can run the ball, he can... Spoil. He, he, can, yeah, he, can, he can be that nose. Yeah. 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 No, there isn't. He's, he's a competitive mm. player. Yeah. Um, he has that edge to him. He can play with the football pre-line, post-line. He can jump and catch a ball above anybody else. He's got all of the skills. It's the try score was fantastically yeah, phenomenal. Yesterday. Oh, phenomenal. He, he, that, that, that just uh, that, that flick on or whatever they call it. But also the try that he scored. Yeah. So, so also as well. Then do you not think? Do you not think that he, he, he could go with Kelly and um, Colin Hardpacks and leave Snead out? Different, Possibly. Different philosophy. Possibly. Possibly. If he wants to go out attack with mm. not not a great kicking game, if you like. Mm. Uh, he could do that again. That's a luxury that he's got, and he's a because all, because all uh, the big, big, 
Say on the last second they've become far too predictable now, they? you know, they're just waiting for Sneed to put the cross the big wingers yeah. and this sort of thing. I'm just thinking of a bit of a different dimension philosophy with them two from there. They've both got decent well, what's, game. what's been evident of, of the two years that Hull have won the Cup is why, why fix what's not broken? Mm-hmm. So that's one and two challenge yeah, cups yeah, back yeah, to yeah, back. Yeah. Um, well, they've been oh, well, they? the yes and no, they've lost the, the same time. failing. Uh, both semi finals that were in the could and perhaps should have won, <coughs> um, and they didn't. And, they, and it was all we've learnt from from that, but they haven't learnt from it because mm. they didn't put Now, again, personnel dictate. Yeah. Um, we were saying probably a couple of weeks ago it's going to be a really strange start to next season. Because unless something dramatic changes, two of the most successful coaches who've ever coached in Super League don't have a job. Yeah. That puts pressure on a coach in Super League, whoever it is. Somebody who starts slowly. No, there is the well, spectre yes, of yeah. two guys on I, I, I agree with that uh, to, to a certain degree. But there's pressure in whichever job you're in. Um, for me, there's pressure on Danny Ward to try and avoid relegation. There's pressure on Catalan to get into the top eight and four. Yeah. There's pressure on Wakefield now to make the top four. There's pressure on Hull FC to be better than there was last year and make the top four. There's pressure on Warrington to try and go one better than what they've gone twice last year. There's pressure on everything. There's pressure on Wigan to try and win the comp again. Yeah. So there's a different degree of pressure. Um, you know, regardless of, of other people that are out of way, there's a degree of pressure within the job. It's as simple as that. And it's a lonely place at times for them boys that are at, at head coaches at clubs. So, um, you know, whilst there's a couple of blocks out of way, I don't think the pressure changes from within the job than... And what you're it just set makes from it slightly own. easier for the chairman to make does. that of course change. Does. Does. But I don't think the shy of pulling the trigger anyway. No, that's let's true. Let's be that honest. I'll tell you what as well, I did say watching that, that other code on uh, Saturday and I said Sean when he's left the sport and he's gone to Scotland. Boy, oh boy. He must be, sh- well, he won't be shaking his head because he's going to have a nice little paper. He's got a good beauty. We all know that. He's got a nice, it's only a console. He's got a nice little pair there, but he must be thinking, bloody hell, have I got to watch this thing? Every week and, and study and well, it's going to be it's going to be a difficult yeah. transition for him. I'm involved it's in the game massive, now, and, and I'm going to be average in the game. It's massive. It's a different sort of yeah. game. It's a totally different game. Isn't well, there's it? a rule coming in this week for the championship clubs playing in the championship cup that uh, any tackle above the nipple, the line of the nipples, is going to be penalised with a penalty, a yellow card, or even a red card. If there's any contact to the head with shoulder, head on head, so the tackle technique and the concussion laws have been seriously and seriously looked at. To, to a point where they're looking at this as a trial in our competition now to bring into the world of, of mm-hmm. rugby union at international level. So straight away, the Owen Farrell tackle last weekend becomes a red card offence, a yellow card, red card offence. It's as simple as that. Uh, we've just looked at a couple this morning with our players saying, if you don't lower your body height here, you're going to spend time in the Simbin or on the sidelines sent off. And that's going to be really difficult for Sean because um, the biggest thing you learn about rugby union and rugby league is one you hit to roll away and one you wrestle and it's a big wrestling league and there's no wrestling union very little wrestle you can't wrestle head on in union and try and hold them up anymore unless you're underneath the football with this rule coming in so it's a really really difficult game to understand anyway without any other new laws what i will say about the rugby union um which is different to our game and you mentioned the referee on on sunday um the australian referee who didn't blow for penalties when Super League referees would have blown for mm. penalties. And the one I remember more than any other one is the last tackle penalty where they've played the ball into one of the New yes. Zealand players. As you said. And he's he way play on. on. Yeah. He's milking a penalty. And if you've played the game, you understand it. And yeah. if you referee it in the right way, it's play on. Mm. And the players will soon forget about it. In rugby union, it's one more. It's as simple as that. Across the board, you know, Fiji against Samoa is refereed no different to England and South Africa. It's as simple as that. The, you may get a, a couple of little rule interpretations that are different in the Southern and Northern Hemisphere, but we're playing off a different set of rules internationally to Super League as to NRL. Yeah. How can that be right for right. me? We, we, we're not even sure if there's such a thing as a free play. In the first yeah. test, you go, no, play on. And yeah. go, oh, no, we don't play no, that, we don't have that rule. Yeah. <laughs> the 20 metre restart. The, 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 only, um, keep dead. 